Hey guys, meteorologist Chris Tomer here with this afternoon mountain weather update. All right, here's what I'm seeing this afternoon. Latest data, latest trends. So storm number one continues as we speak in Utah, parts of Wyoming, just now starting to move into Colorado. A lot of that now with storm number one, that transition will take place, pulling the snow out of Utah overnight into Colorado and into northern New Mexico. And then tomorrow afternoon, 1-8, into tomorrow evening, it will begin to exit Colorado and New Mexico. Then it's on to storm number two, that's 1-9 through 1-11. Storm number three could still be the most potent of the three storm systems with a batch of Arctic air, an Arctic front, and a jet blast, a lot of transport with the jet in high uh, snow ratios. Uh, storm number three in particular, that's the one that could potentially have the biggest overall totals of the three storms. And in the Wasatch, that storm is trending up. It's trending stronger. The numbers for the Wasatch are trending up. The Tetons, on the other hand, could be split. I'm seeing data both ways. I'll show you what I'm thinking with the Tetons coming up, especially with that third storm system here in just a few. The Northeast, you're just now seeing storm number one come to an end. It'll finish up. We ended up with about eight inches, I think, my last check in Killington. Um, the next storm, 19110, powerful storm. It's going to have 60 to 70 mile an hour wind gusts. It will start out as some heavy snow, but then it changes over to a rain-snow mix or even rain at the ski areas of the Northeast. Then the 112-113 storm system could drop moderate to heavy snowfall across uh, the Northeast, Vermont, New Hampshire, Maine, all those ski areas. Let me take you over to water vapor at this hour. So oranges and reds are drier air. Your moisture is in your whites, your blues, and your greens. So there's our, four, our first storm system. This is number one. Big storm number two back here, waiting in the wings. And just off the screen, you can't see it as number three, but this storm will come in, same, do the same maneuver, drop in with uh, heavy snow and its own batch of cold air and nail the west. Third storm would come in and grab a piece of that, that Arctic air from, the, from Canada and bring it down. Here's the latest forecast radar and satellite. So that's the current situation. You can see where the snow is in blue. By tomorrow morning, a lot of it has transitioned into Colorado and New Mexico, and it's much lighter in Wyoming and in Utah. By tomorrow afternoon, storm starts to pull away out of Colorado and New Mexico. Then we see storm number two coming in from the Pacific Northwest. You can see the spiral and the spin, and then it moves into the Intermountain West with its own batch of uh, snow for the Tetons, the Wasatch in Colorado. And notice hanging on the back side, um, there's that moisture that swipes the Sierra and then it's into the interior. The low makes its move through Colorado and New Mexico through 111 in the afternoon. All right, here comes storm number three. You can see it dropping south. It's got, it's got some of that, that cold air, that spin coming out of Canada with the, uh, the polar vortex. And also, you see the diagonal of snow. That's the Arctic front itself. So on behind that, on the north side of that band, is much colder air. So the question here is, once this front blows past the Tetons, is that it? Will that lighten the snow in the Tetons once that passes? It's possible. It's possible that once it moves past, it turns the wind and, and we only see some light, maybe moderate additional accumulation. There's another school of thinking that the front's much slower moving, could get hung up, the winds stay favorable, and the Tetons continue to get heavy snow past this point. One thing's for sure, it lines up perfectly right with the Wasatch and western and northwest Colorado. Those areas appear to receive the very heaviest, heaviest snowfall, the bullseyes, with this type of setup and this Arctic front that's hanging from west to east like this. That flow is very direct. Um, that would produce some sizable orographic snowfall for the Wasatch in western and northwest Colorado. So we'll leave the Tetons in somewhat of a question mark at this point, um, and we'll play it down the middle of the road and not go too extreme. Okay, here is a jet stream pattern. I got a lot of uh, maps here. No, let's go to 113 before we do it. Here's the forecast radar and satellite for 113. Notice the flow, very powerful flow through the Sierra, and it's running right across the Wasatch and right into western and northwest Colorado. And look at the Tetons out of it by 113. So this is the issue that I'm talking about. Here's 114. Again, Tetons are out of it, but that heavy snow continues from the Sierra into Utah and into Colorado. All right, jet pattern. Uh, actually, you know what? Here's one more. 115. Storm is now in Colorado, New Mexico, and it's pulling away. So that's 115. Um, so jet stream, 18, 
You can see the deep trough. That's the storm system departing Colorado and New Mexico. That's storm one. Here's storm two. Big broad trough. Digs a little deeper across the west coast here in this update. Uh, that's, that's a strong storm system. And here's the interesting part for 113. This is storm number three. You can see um, a co-location of the polar jet, the subtropical jet, a lot of transport, that Arctic front sitting right across um, right across the Wasatch and right across uh, the western and northwest aspects of Colorado. And for that matter, um, parts of uh, the Sierra could get heavy snow. So here is uh, the new grand total map. Um, so the Wasatch staying very strong. In fact, the numbers have trended up. That's assuming perfection out of that number three storm. Um, the numbers in the, uh, the Sierra, two to three to four feet, somewhere in there, two to three feet. Colorado, the numbers across western and northwest Colorado have gone up as a result of the placement of that Arctic front. So in, in some areas, again, grand totals, this is 17 through 116, looking at three feet, four feet of snow, potentially. And the Tetons, before all this happens, you're going you're gonna to get probably two feet of snow. And then once the Arctic front goes by, it's possible it comes to an end. We'll have to wait and see what the data looks like tomorrow. Um, across the Pacific Northwest, Washington, Oregon, things remain very strong. Deep moisture, central to northern Idaho, northwest Montana, parts of interior BC. Let's break it down by period. So the remainder of today through tomorrow, very light accumulations uh, remaining. Most of it's in Colorado, northern New Mexico. And then you can see the next blast, the next storm system affecting the Pacific Northwest um, at that point. Here's storm number two, 19 through 111. Big accumulations. Anything in purple, pink is over a foot, and that's a lot of areas. Um, but a pretty big snow there for the Tetons and the Wasatch in, in western and southwest Colorado ahead of this. This is all, this is good stuff. That's storm number two. Here's storm number three. You can see the, the sharp demarcation. Um, you know, the Tetons probably get seven inches as the front slides by, and then it gets hung up over the Wasatch in western and northwest Colorado, and that's where you see the biggest, uh, the biggest bullseyes. And, you know, 32 inches at Alta Snowbird through that period was storm number three. Not out of the question, not at all. Um, I think Steamboat will be close to that, if not right on that. Uh, Western and Southwest Colorado, one to two feet. Um, so we'll have to see that that third storm it still remains, you know, really the biggest question mark. All right, zooming in on what you saw there in Colorado, this is a grand total map, one seven through one sixteen, I seventy corridor north. A couple of feet along I-70, but the, that bullseye up there, western and northwest Colorado, potentially four feet. Let's go down to the San Juans and take a look around. Um, still big snow here. Grand totals, 17 through 116. You can see the numbers, potentially two to three feet. And snow, especially with that third storm system, all the way down to the valley floor of Durango and Bayfield. So that's just a much colder storm system. All right, one last stop. This is the northeast, 17 through 116 grand totals. So you're gonna get a you're gonna get a shot of some snow, heavy snow on the front end of this 19 110 storm. But it again it changes over to a rain snow mix or rain on 110. And then you're gonna get a shot of moderate to heavy snow, 112, 113. Alright guys, that's gonna do it for this update. Always appreciate you tuning in here and take care.